Cool. Hi and welcome to The Running Channel. I'm Anna and today along with Rick here, we're going to be filling you in on all things running cadence. What it is, why it's important and how you can improve yours. Yeah, if you're new around here, we regularly upload new videos including how-tos, features and interviews all about running. So hit subscribe and also tap on that little bell so you get notified when we do. Running cadence is one of two factors that make up a runner's speed. The other is stride length, but today we're going to focus on the former. So simply put, running cadence is the number of times your feet hit the ground in 60 seconds. So a really simple way of doing that is to count the number of times your feet are hitting the ground in a minute. It can also be measured by the number of times just the one foot hits the ground in 60 seconds. Most new GPS watches will measure your cadence while you run. Some do measure it differently to others though. For example, Polar will measure one foot at a time. So 90 steps per minute on a Polar will be the equivalent to 180 steps per minute on a Garmin as they measure both feet at the same time. Next, we'll take a look at what those numbers mean. There's no such thing as a universal optimal cadence rate. There's no one stride rate that everybody should be aiming for. And your training cadence is going to be different to your racing cadence. Generally, your racing cadence is going to be faster. If you look at Olympic runners over 10K, their stride rate is going to be up to around about 200 steps per minute, up to about 210 steps when they're sprinting for the finish. So as things move and shift through a race, so will your cadence. Away from the closing moments of a race though, most elites will tend to have a running cadence of around 180 to 184 steps per minute. Now that can be whether they're running a 1500 meter or a marathon. So 180 steps per minute has long been hailed as the magic number, but is it realistic? Most recreational runners and those starting out who are probably going to check their cadence right about now will notice that their sits at around 150, maybe up to 160 steps per minute. Now, 170 steps per minute and higher is optimal. And you will find that those higher cadence numbers will be in runners who have a midfoot strike. So runners who tend to overstride can use their heels which create a braking effect and that will bring your cadence number down. The best piece of advice that I got when I was trying to improve my running efficiency and quicken my cadence was to imagine that there were puppy's tails on the ground underneath my feet. So you don't want to step on them too hard and you want to move your feet away from them as quickly as possible because you don't want to hurt them, therefore moving your feet quicker. There are a few tools at your disposal when it comes to improving your running cadence. The first one's really, really simple, counting. So just counting the number of times your foot hits the ground in 60 seconds and then timesing that by two. Other ways though, you can use a GPS tool on your watch and set the screen to see your current cadence. Alternatively, if you own a treadmill, you could use a metronome. Uh, loads of free metronome apps out there. You set it to 180 beats per minute and follow it that way. Alternatively, you can just use tunes, just use some songs. Yeah. Uh, head over to the Running Channels playlist on Spotify. We've got loads of songs there that are all set at 180. Magic number, beats per minute. Your running cadence is determined by your training history, your running ability and your anatomy. Taller runners, for example, will have slightly lower running cadence. But everybody has their own personal cadence. Some might run completely economically by taking long strides, but others might take much shorter strides and also run completely economically. There's really not much point in trying to become a better runner simply by trying to improve your running cadence. It just doesn't work like that. In order to become a better runner, you have to focus on all aspects of running. So speed, strength, stamina, coordination, and then you might see that with that, your cadence then increases. Therefore, being able to handle the same speed, but using less effort. 
One of the most common mistakes when trying to up our cadence is overstriding. Now, when we overstride, we tend to lock our knee and slam our heel down with every single foot strike. Overstriding won't actually make you run any faster. Instead, it will actually slow you down because it gives you a wobbly, choppy gait with every heel strike. This actually increases the pressure here around these bones and muscles in this area and therefore increases your risk of getting an injury. A number of studies have suggested that by having a higher cadence, it improves a runner's form and therefore leads to fewer injuries down the line. So if you're looking to improve your running cadence, make sure you do it gradually and build up, otherwise you can run the risk of getting injured in the process. So really, you only want to be adding around two to five steps per minute at any one time. Don't do it too quickly. And practice that higher running cadence during your run. So maybe do a minute at a higher cadence, then go back to running your normal cadence for three to five minutes, then have another burst of a minute of trying the higher cadence Play around with the timings and see what works for you, but the key here is to build it up gradually. Yeah, and it can take up to six to eight weeks for you to reach that new cadence, but muscle memory means that you will stick with it when you get there. One of the main functions of running drills is to keep you quick and light on your feet when you're darting around, which can also up your cadence. Great place to do this, track and interval sessions. So do your warm up, then do your drills, and then on to your main session. Hopefully you found this video about running cadence useful. If you have any questions for us, please leave them in the comments below and we'll see you next time on The Running Channel.